EU4, a game that has been continued to be developed over eight years, as Paradox players can't stop trying to reform the Roman Empire for the 80th time. Even if you have thousands of hours in EU4, there's always something that you can try in this game that's new. Today though, we want to talk about what region within this game should be updated in the next DLC. Now I know there's going to be a lot of bias within the comments, with EU4 players screaming at the top of their lungs that their own region they live in should get the next update. Who doesn't want to see a Britannia 2.0? Maybe only me. Going back to the point, there's two ways in which I'm going to judge on whether a region should get an update. Firstly, the region probably needs a DLC if it is vastly underdeveloped and missing historically interesting nations. Secondly, the region needs to be popular enough so E4 players actually want to play in it. We are also trying to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so why not help us out and subscribe and we can all go on an old trip together. Let's first begin with my personal recommendation of where the next update should be, which is Scandinavia. Why do you ask? Well firstly, this region is popular and nations like Sweden and Denmark are played all the time by people within the community. Yet the Swedish missions are certainly not interesting to play and we can see here that it looks very similar to the generic mission tree. Same goes for the Danish one as well. Norway doesn't even have a mission tree, so I'm sure some Norwegians are pretty annoyed about this. Despite these nations being popular, they have much less flavour than more insignificant nations in Europe like Brittany or Saxony. All this points towards Scandinavia needing a flavour pack desperately. On top of this, there are also some interesting additions they could add to the region if they had a flavour pack. Firstly, the Greenland Vikings could technically be added into the game in some form or another, bringing just a bit more flavour to the wasteland of Greenland. Given their mysterious ending, historians have been fascinated about them for centuries and I'm sure some players would gain the same fascination as well. Secondly, we also have the Gotland Pirates, which could be its own pirate nation and also has an interesting backstory. Although there's already flavour to do with this nation and the province is occupied by rebels, there is definitely a lot more that could be added in order to make this region more interesting. There's also the potential addition of a few one province miners and some potentially northern colonisable land, since historically, northern Scandinavia, eastern Finland and parts of northern Russia were not colonised. Finally, who would not want some sort of whale trade good within Norway? I've made a more detailed video about why this region should get an update, so go check it out after if you haven't already. The next region I wish to talk about is the Baltics. Crusading nations have always been quite popular within EE4, and both the Teutonic and Livonian Order are no exception to the rule. I've always enjoyed trying to get the Baltic Crusader achievement. The shocking thing is though, that both these interesting EE4 nations have no unique mission tree, despite being very much relevant and popular. Not only this, but there's also a possibility of adding a new bishopric within the Teutonic Order, and maybe even potentially adding in even more historical flavour, as there's quite a lot of documented history in this area. The Hanseatic cities of Danzig and other Prussian cities founded the Prussian Confederation in 1440 so that they could free themselves from the overlordship of the Teutonic Knights. Although I believe there's an event that pops up to do this later, this isn't actually represented at the start of the game, so perhaps Paradox could tweak this and make the region more interesting. There's also the potential of a new religion being added into the game, although it significantly declined at the start of EU4, it nonetheless would be interesting to add in as a sort of revival religion and I'm sure a lot of EU4 players would find it quite interesting to play with. I'd therefore say that maybe Paradox could add a flavour pack to both Scandinavia and the Baltics. What do you guys think though? Should the Baltics get an update given what we know about them? Moving on, one of the most important regions at the start of EE4 that critically changed the world at this time is most certainly the area around Byzantium and when Constantinople fell in 1453, the whole Christian world was an absolute shock as this century old empire fell to the Ottoman Turk. Given the fact quite a few people brought EE4 because of Byzantium, it makes sense to add a flavour pack that includes the Anatolian region and the southern Balkan region. Going from west to east, Athens firstly doesn't have its own unique mission tree and given its historical context, quite a lot of EE4 players 
would love for this nation to have more historical flavour. We also notice Byzantium is not represented in a historical way, and Morea could also be shown as a vassal, although some people may disagree with me on this. There could also be some reference to the Bulgarian fort of Levet, and maybe an Ottoman event appears where they have to deal with the Bulgarians. Going on to the Anatolian side, none of these E4 miners have a unique mission tree, despite being relatively popular nations to play as. In terms of religions and other things, there is quite some interesting ones around, so no doubt many E4 players might want to play within this region, more than they are now. What do you guys think though? Should they add something more to this region? So, the three regions I've mentioned are the three I'd love to see updated. Maybe some people would argue it's too Eurocentric, but given the fact we've had origins, it's worth going back to parts of Europe, which is the centerpiece of the game and where most people play. A few honourable mentions are needed though, and one that comes to mind first is South America, which is perhaps the most underdeveloped region within the whole game. And some people argue it has the same design philosophy as EU3. I don't know many people who've played in this region, and for good reason, considering many people believe it's a snooze fest to play it. There's only one nation in the whole of South America with a unique mission tree. Maybe therefore you could argue this region needs an update, but even if it is given a new lease of light, players might still not care and focus on regions that are actually more interesting to play in. Another honourable mention is also Northwest Africa, which I'd argue definitely could use an update, with some interesting nations like Tunis and Morocco, and it is certainly more relevant than South America, but still lacks a bit of interest from a general E4 audience. The final honourable mention I'd like to say is any interesting region within Asia, perhaps east of Anatolia, could be an interesting region to update, as the nations of Georgia or Karakanulu are played by quite a few people. I believe Paradox need at least two or three more flavour packs before they completely move on to Europa Nusalis 5. But at the end of the day, the future for this game is still in the air, and we aren't completely sure what's going to happen next. What can be said though, is that this game is coming to the end of its product life cycle, and the game should be finished within the next two or three years, as the player base has begun to stagnate. Some people even argue that Paradox shouldn't be focusing on new content and instead fixing all the bugs in Europa Nusalis 4, which is actually what they're doing now. What do you guys think though? Should any of the regions I've mentioned be updated? Or is it better for Paradox to focus on other games that are in more dire need of development? Maybe some Paradox employees will even see this. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, J Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot, guys.